Did Meghan Markle throw an epic toddler-sized tantrum when she was told that she could not wear the tiara of her choice according to certain reports. Hello everyone, welcome to Royal Fashion News. I thought today, Prince Harry and Meghan Markle's fifth wedding anniversary, we would look back at the Queen Mary Bando tiara. This is the one that Meghan wore on her wedding day, but apparently it was not the one she initially wanted. And as I was looking through some of the bit of the history here, the tiara gate and about how this whole thing fell apart regarding the tiara, I thought it would be fun to discuss the different stories. And ooh, oh my goodness, are they a little crazy? Because apparently what Meghan wants, Meghan gets, but it was not the tiara that she wanted. So just a little bit of history. So the Queen Mary's Bandeau tiara is actually one that had not been seen much. It was made in 1932 for Queen Mary, who was the grandmother of Queen Elizabeth. The tiara has a flexible band of 11 sections and a pave set with large and small brilliant diamonds in a geometric shape. And the center is set with a detachable brooch of 10 brilliant diamonds. And this brooch was actually part of a wedding present given to Her Majesty in 1893 by the County of Lincoln. And it was inherited by Queen Elizabeth by her mother. And it was one that we have, I think, one picture maybe of Queen Mary wearing this tiara. So when Meghan debuted this for the first time, I remember thinking, I read through and had printed out copies of Leslie Field's book on the Queen Jewels from my library ages ago. And I was really familiar with the tiaras, many of them in the British collection. I had never seen this one. And I have to admit, it's not bad. It's, it's not really my favorite. I don't find it super exciting. I, I don't particularly, you know, would necessarily gravitate towards it myself. But especially with Meghan's overall very bland aesthetic in terms of her wedding look, this tiara, I don't think, this tiara definitely fit that. So she really needed something to elevate her look because it wasn't the tiara she attempted with the veil, but I think the veil was just a hot mess because it just gathered, it was too long, and it was also very presumptive because the only people who have had the flowers of the Commonwealth so, sewn into their dresses, the first was Her Majesty the Queen at her coronation, and the second was Meghan Markle at her wedding. The third might have been Queen Camilla. I'm not sure if she included all of those in her gown. Catherine obviously did a nod to the four main flowers of the United Kingdom. So Camilla may have inserted some of the Commonwealth flowers into her gown. But when you think about it, that Meghan Markle was the only one who decided to put all the Commonwealth flowers into her look says a lot about her eye think. And like I said, I think her look needed something because it was too plain otherwise. It was very, very boring. Even though I was not a fan of Megan from the beginning, I was still looking forward to her wedding look and was utterly underwhelmed by it, including the tiara. But then something interesting happened and this started to break around November 9th. So this was just about six months after her wedding. And then all of a sudden, we're hearing that perhaps Megan did not want this wedding tiara. This actually debuted only a couple of weeks after the exhibit for her gown debuted, where Megan gave us her first initial version of selecting the tiara. She said, when it came to the tiara on my day, I was very fortunate to be able to choose this gorgeous Art Deco design bandeau tiara, she said in an audio commentary for the exhibit of her wedding dress. Harry and I had gone to Buckingham Palace to meet with Her Majesty the Queen to select one of the options that were there, which was an incredibly surreal day as you can imagine. I shouldn't have really even been there, Harry said but such an incredible loan by my grandmother, it was very sweet. Ultimately, the tiara chosen was classically simple and one Harry certainly approved of. Funnily enough, he said, it was the one that suited the best, the one that looked the best on you without question. That was the one that I think as we tried them on stood out. I think it was just perfect because it was so clean and simple. And also to the, that point, an extension of what Claire and I had been trying to do with the dress, which was something that could have been so incredibly timeless, but still feel modern. And I should add in parentheses, also incredibly dull and uninspired and 
really, really banal. Anyways, but on November 9th, we got a different version of the story. According to a well-placed Royal Insider, this was from The Sun that broke it with Dan Wooten, said that Meghan had her heart set on this tiara with emeralds and Prince Harry hit the roof when they were told it was impossible for her to wear. Provenance of the tiara could not be established. There were concerns that could have come from Russia originally. There was a very heated exchange that prompted the queen to speak to Harry. She said, Meghan cannot have whatever she wants. She gets what she tiaras she's given by me. The queen also questioned why Meghan needed a veil for the wedding, given that it was to be her second marriage. The message from the queen was very much Meghan needed to think about how she speaks to staff members and be careful to follow family protocols. And there's been a lot of questions about which tiara Meghan wanted. Was it the one Eugenie wore at her wedding, which I actually think is fabulous. I loved that tiara. It's a Kakashnik style, has these gorgeous emeralds in it. And I think it was simple and yet was dramatic in a way because I think the emeralds really made it stand out. Meghan's overall very plain aesthetic with a, I would hate to say it, but somewhat plain tiara, plain hair the over the top veil, it just didn't really work at all. And then the other option that people have posited is that Megan wanted, and I understand because this does have a Russian origin, is the Vladimir tiara, the one with the massive emeralds that hang, the one that only the queen wears. Now, I will say, guys, I am 100% on board with the fact that Megan would have been absolutely insane to request that tiara, and that would have been initially told. They would have looked at her like as if she was out of her mind asking for that. So I really don't think she did, but is there a possibility she also wanted the emerald tiara that went to Eugenie? I think that's entirely possible, and honestly, again, I prefer that tiara. And just to give you another version that we got of this tiara story, let me share with you the one we got from Tom Bauer. It said that Megan's behavior was fueling palace speculation about Kate's anger over her treatment of their shared staff. Megan's requests they complained were delivered as commands rather than inquiries about whether something would be possible. The team of handpicked professional women preparing for the wedding were the target of her complaints. Among the several disputes was the choice of music for the wedding, undecided until the last days. The menu at the reception constantly changed. The guest list, not only old friends, but many of Harry's cousins, uncles, aunts were ex excluded. Whether the guest list should, as usual, be published, Megan's veto was final. The seating arrangements in St. George's Chapel, Megan's wedding dress frequently recut, and it shows whether air freshener could be used in the chapel. Megan's request was rejected. The mounting costs, Charles agreed to increase the budget, and not least, which and not and not least, which tiara Megan would wear. No member of Buckingham Palace's staff is closer to the Queen than Angela Kelly, the 61-year-old personal advisor to the Queen's wardrobe devoted to the monarch. Kelly's many duties include caring for the royal collection of tiaras. Invited to the palace's secure rooms, Megan alighted on a tiara sparkling with emeralds. Her choice was approved by Harry. Kelly suggested that its Russian origin made it unsuitable. Harry became angry. He had been downright rude, the Times was told. Kelly reported the unhappy exchange to the Queen. Harry was summoned by his grandmother to a private meeting. He was put firmly in his place, the Times reported. Shortly before the wedding, the approved tiara featured in a second tiara dispute. Megan's hairdresser flew in from New York to rehearse his work around the tiara. Queen Mary's diamond bandeau. Megan asked that the tiara be delivered to the stylist's room. Kelly refused. Tiaras, she said, were not released for hairdresser rehearsals. Harry again became irate, accusing Kelly of being unhelpful. What Megan wants, Megan gets, he shouted. Harry was now called the hostage by some of his staff. Less frivolous was the realization Megan did not seem disturbed by arousing anyone's displeasure. Traditional hierarchy and family relations did not deter her from annoying anyone, and that included the queen. But to hear Harry and Meghan's version, oh, oh, it, it is, it is timeless. It is hysterical. It is lovely. So it says, 
And this is in chapter, apparently 43 of Harry's memoir. It says, next came the question of the tiara. My aunts asked if Meg would like to wear my mother's. We were both touched. Megan then spent hours and hours with her dress designer, getting the veil to match the tiara, giving it a similar scalloped edge. Okay, I call complete BS on this story. The tiara did not belong to Harry's aunts. It belongs to his uncle. It never belonged to his mother. It belonged to her father, and now it belongs to her brother, so Charles Spencer. This idea that somehow Diana's sisters were going, oh, wear her tiara. It's not even her tiara. It's the family's tiara. So this idea that Meghan was gonna get to wear that and not the one from the queen was lunacy on its face. Shortly before the wedding, however, Granny reached out. And I don't buy this either. Again, Catherine, the Princess of Wales, at her wedding, her wedding earrings matched her tiara. Clearly she had known for a while that this was the tiara she was gonna wear because her parents had been able to commission jewelry based on the design of the tiara. She offered us access to her collection of tiaras. She even invited us to Buckingham Palace to try them on. Do come over, I remember her saying. Extraordinary morning, we walked into Granny's private dressing room right next to her bedroom, a space I'd never been in. Along with Granny was a jewelry expert, an eminent historian who knew the lineage of each stone in the royal collection. Also present was Granny's dresser and confidant, Angela. Five tiaras were arrayed on the table and Granny directed Meg to try on each one before for a full length mirror. I stood behind watching. One was all emeralds, one was aquamarines. Each was more dazzlingly stunning than the last. Each took my breath. I wasn't the only one, Granny said to Meg quite tenderly, tiaras suit you. Oh, I bet. I bet that Megan ate that up at the Queen said that and the Queen could have just been being nice, y'all. Meg melted. Thank you, ma'am. One of the five, however, stood out. Everyone agreed. It was beautiful, seemingly made for Meg. Granny said it would be placed in a safe directly as she looked forward to seeing it on Meg's head come the big day. Make sure, she added, that you practice putting it on with your hairdresser. It's a bit tricky and you don't want it to be doing it for the first time on the wedding day. So yes, this is true. And guess what? Catherine, the Princess of Wales, tried it out with. According to reports, her hairdresser utilized a tiara from Claire's. So yes, she did not perhaps use her wedding tiara for any trials until the big day, maybe not even then. So yes. We left the palace feeling awed and loved and grateful. A week later, we contacted Angela and asked her to please send us the chosen tiara so we could practice putting it on. We'd done research. We'd spoken to Kate about her own experience with a Claire's tiara, with a Claire's tiara which they don't mention. And we learn Granny's warning was spot on. The placing of the tiara was an intricate, elaborate process. It had to be first sewn into the veil, then Meg's hairdresser would need to fix it to a small plate in her hair. Complicated, time consuming. We'd need at least one dress rehearsal. And it's her hair still looked terrible on that day too. That was the other thing, her hair fell apart. For some reason, however, Angela didn't respond to any of our messages. We kept trying, no response. When we finally reached her, she said, the tiara would require an orderly and a police escort to leave the palace. That sounded a bit much. Like he could say, does he own the tiara? No, it's a priceless historic artifact of the UK government, Terry. Well, I mean, technically it's part of the royal collection, but inevitably if the British royal family dissolved, most likely it would go into the hands of the government. So she can't just let it out really nilly because your hairdresser decided to come in that day. But all right, I said, if that's protocol, let's find an orderly and a police officer because you know, those are so easy to find and not like they don't have anything better to do. Maybe Megan could do her practice at Buckingham Palace, maybe? And get the ball rolling. Time was running out. Inexplicably, she replied, can't be done. Why can't it? Her schedule was too busy. She was being obstructive, obviously. But for what reason, we couldn't even hazard a guess. I considered going to Granny, but that would probably mean sparking an all out confrontation. And I wasn't quite sure with whom Granny would side. Also to my mind, Angela was a troublemaker and I didn't, she's in her sixties. She's in her 60s. Harry's scared of a woman in her 60s. And I didn't need her as my enemy. Above all, she was in possession of that tiara. She held all the cards. It's not like she's not going to give it to you. She just couldn't give it to you right 
then just reading this guys is just i mean it just tickles me to death it's so ridiculously over the top and dramatic it's just delicious and dumb <laughs> So let's go on. Next came a novella in one of the tabloids about the tiara. The article said Meg had demanded a certain tiara and that had belonged to mummy. And when the queen refused, I thrown a fit. What Ma Megan wants, Megan gets. Days later, the coup de grace from a royal correspondence, a sci-fi fantasy describing the growing fjorda between Kate and Meg, claiming that according to sources, Meg had reduced Kate to tears about the bridesmaid stresses. This particular royal correspondent had always made me ill. She'd always, always gotten stuff wrong, but this felt more wrong. I read the story in disbelief. Megan did it. She still wasn't reading anything. She only heard about it. However, it was the only thing being discussed in Britain for the next 24 hours. And as long as I live, I'll never forget the tone of her voice as she looked at me and she said, Has, I made her cry. I made her cry. <laughs> Sorry, it's, this was so deliciously bad. Oh man, oh man. Oh, this gets better. Oh, that's so funny. Okay, and one more little bit here. So he talks about how Megan wasn't given the, the special security training that he thought she should get, which again, I call BS on because I've gotten a similar security training for an own, my, a previous job that I had. And it says, for that matter, how I wish I could send special forces to go and grab that tiara. Angela still hadn't delivered it. Megan's hairdresser had come in from France for the rehearsal and the tiara still wasn't there. So he'd gone back. Again, we phoned Angela and get nothing. Finally, Angela appeared out of thin air at Kensington Palace. We met her in the audience room. She put before us a release, which I signed, and then she handed me the tiara. I thanked her, though I added that it would have made our lives so much easier to have had it sooner. Her eyes were fire. She started having a go at me. Angela, you really want to do this now? Really? Now? She fixed me with a look that could have made me shiver. I could read in her face a clear warning. This isn't over. <laughs> it's so bad. It's so bad. Oh my gosh. That's so bad. Like, oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. She sounds like a toddler. Okay. I wasn't expecting to be that in by it. But I just wanted to look back because I just did think it was super interesting. When we think about royal weddings, we always think about tiara and always the big question is, that's how I really started getting into royals. It's like, what tiara was Kate going to wear at her wedding? And of course the question extended to Megan as well. But unlike Kate, we had a lot more drama in this situation. And it appears like, I don't know if all the stories are true because there's even different variations of all this. But I do think there was some bust up about the tiara. And I do think perhaps Megan wanted one that she wasn't going to get access to. And I think that really drove her bonkers. And the monarchy, though, they had to make a decision. And I think Megan wanted things that to a certain extent, the monarchy could just not give her at the time because there's a lot of protocols in place and they are there for a reason. It's to protect the royal collection and make sure that it is there for the future. So guys, let me know what you think. Let me know what Tiara you think Meghan Markle wanted. And is there, as Prince Harry says, a full emerald tiara in the British Royal Collection? I would love to see that. I have no doubt there are tiaras in that collection that we don't know about. And I really hope once again, that Camilla and Catherine ladies have fun with that collection. Make it what you will really, really play with it because the British Royal Collection is massive. It's amazing, but it's also very static. And we've seen Queen Maxima, especially she's taken, she's, we've seen four different versions of the Stuart tiara because she's been able to mess around with it a bit and really create some really interesting, unique looks. So I hope Catherine and Camilla are able to do the same. And again, and so five years ago, Megan, for the first and the last time, wore a tiara. I doubt she will ever wear one 
ever, ever again. So guys, let me know what you think of this video. Let me know what you think of Megan's wedding tiara. I'm sorry, I don't have much to say about it because honestly, we just don't have that much of a history about it, but we have quite the spat, the very, very dramatic, Harry retelling of that tiara and that he needed special forces to go grasp it from Angela. So guys, thank you so much for watching. Let me know what you think and I look forward to seeing you again next week. I actually filmed as well a video on the on the Queen Mary's Lovers Not Tiara for next week. So guys, again, that'll be awesome. Thanks for watching. I look forward to seeing you again soon. Bye.